Okay, our file is set up. The first thing we're gonna do is, is paint the sphere. Um, let's go over to our layers palette first and make a new layer. What we're gonna do is make like a white um, cutout for the sphere, like a white background for the sphere. And this will make sense as we go here. So let's make a new layer of our background and call the new layer um, sphere white. Turn off the eyeball on the background layer. So now we have a transparent canvas here. Go to the marquee selection tool, hit the drop down menu and choose elliptical marquee tool. Come over your canvas, hold down the shift key. So we make a perfect circle. So holding down shift, click, hold and drag. Make a nice big circle with marching ants. And, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be centered, but if you want to center it, you can always, or move it or resize it, you can always go to Select, Transform Selection, and the bounding box will come around the selection, and you can move it and you can resize it with the, the bounding box. If the bounding box is around the selection, Photoshop will not do anything until you hit the Return key um, to accept the selection. So I'm going to hit Return, and the bounding box goes away. Um, okay, so I'm going to fill this circle with white. So bring white into the foreground. Enable the paint bucket tool, which resides under the gradient tool. So hit the drop down menu, choose paint bucket tool, hover anywhere over the, the circle you just drew, and click, and there you go. We're going to, when we paint the background and stuff, we're going to you know, use this, um, we might come, have to come back and use a selection, so we're going to save the selection, click select, save selection, and put in the word sphere for this first one, click OK. Now we're going to paint on a layer on top of this. Come over to your layers palette, hit the background sphere white, make a new layer, and let's call it sphere paint. This uh, process, we're only going to use black paint, and we're going to use a large brush with low flow and low opacity. So first things first, bring black into the foreground on your color picker. Um, you can enable the brush tool here with this toolbar, this tool icon, or you can hit B on the keyboard for brush tool. When I enable the brush tool, the usual default is a soft brush at 13, um, 13 pixels in, in diameter. If you this brush doesn't come up, you can do the drop down menu. Yours will be set up differently than mine, but typically when you hit the drop down menu, you can find a soft round brush. The uh, size we're going to make it very large. Now I could hit the drop down menu here and I could adjust the size with this slider. A much easier way to adjust the brush size, I'll come back to the canvas here, is to use the bracket keys on the keyboard. The bracket key, the closed bracket key next to the forward slash, if I tap that, the brush size gets bigger. If I, um, the bracket key next to the letter P makes the, the uh, brush smaller. Again, for this, uh, you're going to use a big honking brush that's pretty, that's almost a third of the size of the object you're going to be painting. So again, I got a 2000 by 2000 uh, pixel image here at 240 DPI. I got the brush set at 600. So this is a relative number depending on how big your file size is, but 600 is the size I'm going to start with here. Opacity. Crank the opacity down to about 20, somewhere between 10 and 20. I got it mine at 18, close enough. Set the flow down to 10, and you'll see how this works. Okay, so before I paint, I want to explain something. I got this soft airbrush, and I'm not painting right now. The, f the force of the flow, you know, it's all digital, so it's all in the virtual realm, but I mean, the force of the flow is in the center of the brush. And as you go out, out 
towards the edges of the circle of the brush, the paint gets more diffuse. So I'm going to use that to my advantage, and I'm only going to touch the object with the edge of the brush. So I'm going to click and hold and paint around the, uh, I'm going to make like this nice like halo, gray halo around here. And it might be hard to see on your screen. Um, oh, and the other thing is, for this object and for the ones I'm going to do for this exercise, I'm going to imagine that the light is coming up from the, the upper left. So what I want to do is preserve this. I'm not painting right now, I'm just showing you. I'm going to preserve this area as a highlight. The darkest area, let me change the cursor, the darkest area is going to be like this half moon shape in here. And I don't want to overkill it. What I want to do is preserve a little bit of reflected light here. So let me go back to my brush tool here. Okay, so the again I'm just using the edge of the brush and the first time you do this it's not going to look good so just delete it, hit the delete key on the keyboard and do it again. Okay. Uh, the other thing remember, remember to paint on the correct layer here. Remember you're on the paint layer. Don't paint on your white layer. Okay, so now I'm going to start shaping this in. The um, It's hard to talk and do this at the same time. So the, the lower right of my sphere is going to be darker. Okay. There's going to be like a nice little highlight on the upper right here. I'm not going to mess with this. I'm going to leave that alone. So that's looking pretty good already. I hope you can see that on the screen. Okay, so I get to this point here. This is where it gets tricky. Now I got to reduce the size of my brush a little bit. And I'm going to try to to get this darkest dark is right in this region here. It's like a half moon. So like it's going to be a little smaller down here and up here and a kind of like a banana shape to me is what it looks like. And I'll I'm using the bracket keys to adjust the size of my brush as I go. Cuz if I make it the brush larger, it's more diffuse and I can get like more of a I can blend in stuff. I can blend in shades with a larger brush better. And this is bordering on getting too dark, so I gotta be careful not to overkill it. I gotta be very careful here. Again, if you're painting this and it looks it's not working, just it's okay to hit the delete key and start again. So this is starting to look pretty good here, actually. Um, again, large brush to like blend in the tones. Small brush to put in that darkest dark. And this, this looks a little bit too light here. And you can fiddle with this forever and ever. For this exercise, what I'm evaluating, uh, what I want you to learn is just how do you control lights and darks. To create form. Okay, so that means can you make gradual shadows and do they make sense? You know, does the placement of shadows and reflected light make sense? So I know, like, the on the, the screen that you're looking at right now, this all degrades um, and you're not going to be able to see everything that I, I can see here, but. That, that looks pretty good. That's pretty successful. Um, save your file, Command S or Control S on the keyboard. One last thing we, we want to do, um, come over to the layers palette. We're going to group these guys together, these two layers. Hold down the Shift key and Sphere Paint and Sphere White are selected. Come to the bottom down here, the bottom of the layers palette. If you hover over this little thing, it looks like a folder that says create new group click that and this is 
uh, put into a group. Name that group Sphere. And just to so you're cognizant of what's going on, if you hit the drop down menu, you know, here's we can come back as we work on this little exercise and we can come back here and we can edit the paint job. And um, that's pretty much all we you have to know about that for right now. So that's your sphere. Uh, very good. We'll um, go on to the cylinder in the next video.